What is going on dreamers, Acerd here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add a cooldown to button inputs. Alright, so I'm going to be showcasing the input cooldown on Media Molecule's first person shooter template. More specifically, I'm going to be adding a cooldown to the R2 button, or to the shoot button of this template. So, let's scope into the logic. Let's make sure weapon active, uh, weapon activate is on. Let's go into here, and here is the controller logic. So we are going to be adding a cooldown to this signal right here, R2. So we're going to make sure that um, we're going to set this to zero because um, I want I want it to shoot at any pressure sent at any like uh, pressure of R2. And also, I'm going to make this remote controllable. Um, so we can test it in without going into play mode. Okay, so once we've got all this, we are going to search for this collection. So search Acert Gadget, and you're going to find this collection. Let's go into it and let's get input cooldown. Let's get the input cooldown um, object, microchip, and let's place it right here. So we're going to want the, uh, um, the output of R2 to go into the input of um, the input cooldown microchip. And we're gonna want the output of this to go into wherever you want the signal, wherever you want the signal to go, which is right here. Let's move this here. All right, and we got one more thing to do. Let's actually set the cooldown. So I'm gonna make it one second for now. And if we test this, you can only shoot every second. And if you try to shoot, um, if you try to shoot, if you try to shoot sooner than one second, oops, sorry, it doesn't let you. Now, why does this work? How does this work? Well, the signal is going through this node. The R2 signal is going through this node, and when this node is on, the signal the signal can pass through. So this node is on right now. This node is on right now. So when the signal passes through, you shoot. But you also, you also, if you follow this wire, you also reset this timer. And when you reset this timer, the timer fi finished signal turns off, which in turn turns this node off, preventing the signal from passing through until the timer finishes. This slider is inputting the target time for this timer, aka the cooldown. So... If we lower this cooldown to, let's say, 0.2, we can shoot every... The signal is allowed to go through every 0.2 seconds. Okay, so signal goes through, it activates, the signal does its thing, and it also resets this timer, turning the timer fin finished signal off. Timer, then the timer goes, then the timer plays, Turning this node back on only when the timer is finished. All right, awesome. So that is how it works, and that is how you implement it into your own level. All right, so you are probably wondering, how did I make the intro? Well, let's go to the intro first-person shooter template. Um, I've I haven't added anything outside of this. I've only added. Is this zero? And then this is R2. Yeah. Uh, let's make let's make sure this is yep remote controllable. Okay. So now I can test it um, without going into play mode. I've only added stuff into this microchip. So there's a good amount more. Um, this 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 and this are all visuals. Are all visuals. Um, so that doesn't really allow me to change the cooldown during play mode, um, which is. I assume what you guys are curious about. Um, the way I do that, the way I change the cooldown during play mode is with a variable. So I have the cooldown variable input into the target time of the timer. This is what the slider was being input into. Okay, so how do we change that cooldown variable? Well, I use two variable modifiers. So with D-pad up, I increase this cooldown variable by 0.01 every frame. 
because that's what continuously well powered does. It updates it every single frame. Um, similarly, with the down button, I do the same exact thing, except I increase it by negative 0.01. So that's what this is what that looks like. Um, it's kind of hard to see the graphics. All right. So I'm doing up D-pad and I'm shooting and down D-pad uh, dynamically decreases the current cooldown. So while you're playing, you can decrease the cooldown or increase the cooldown. So maybe you have a bunch of different guns and if you pick up one gun, you want it to shoot slow. And if you pick up another gun, you want it to shoot really fast. But you don't need the shoot logic to be different in every single gun. All you need to do is change the cooldown and maybe the damage and some other stuff of your like of your character. And and then the gun can purely be visual. But that's just one that's just one idea. So that is how I did it. Now maybe you're wondering too, how the heck did it? Uh, how'd you do? How'd you do this uh, loading bar thing? That um, when the, and that represents what the cooldown is. Well, this is how. So with a timeline. Now, in this timeline, we have two keyframes. The the leftmost keyframe. Uh, this is what. Uh, well, the, okay. So the left the leftmost keyframe. This is editing. I believe it's this. Yes. So this number uh, displayer is simply just a white bar. When this keyframe is on, the number displayer looks like this. When this keyframe is on, the number displayer looks like this. Okay, so when the playhead is anywhere in between, the bar grows or shrinks in size. It, it, it essentially is taking not the average it's um it's blending these two keyframes together uh to give you like what would be in between these two things i think i think you get the point i think this explains it just doing this should uh be a good enough way to explain it so but how do i make it represent the cooldown well i take the timer output which uh, converts the current time into a percentage or in other words into a number between zero and one okay and I take that and I put it directly into the playhead so I take this and I put it right into the playhead so when the timer is empty uh, okay so l let me put it this way when the timer is full when the timer is full it's outputting a one, which puts the playhead all the way to the right, which makes this keyframe, which, I mean, you can see it, you can see it, it's full. This this white bar is full. It's uh, the max size. Now, when the timer, when the current time is empty, it goes to this keyframe, which is the smallest bar. And let's do this. And anywhere in between is the other size bars, basically. So that is how I make the cooldown um, graphic. So hopefully that was a good explanation. <laughs> I hope you guys understand how this works and how to implement it in your own level now. I really hope this helped out. And if you enjoy my tutorials, uh, please let me know. Please let me know. If you have any suggestions for other tutorials, again, let me know. I would love to make them for you guys. Um, I, I really think this is going to be a helpful thing. So maybe I'll see it in your levels. I don't know. But anyway, guys, that's it for now. And I will see you in the next video.